Welcome to Local Living Tri-City, your go-to podcast for exploring the vibrant communities of Temecula, Murrieta, and Menifee. Join me, Liz Jones, as we dive into real estate insights and local business stories, bringing you closer to the heart of our Tri-City area. Let's get started with today's episode. Today, we're going to talk about a few things that are, are great to add on to our last podcast series. I want to talk a little bit about the issues of the people that live here, traffic, schools, commute, things like that, where people are coming from, what interests we have here in the area, and see if it makes sense to you. So let's talk a little bit about the experience. So we have folks coming in from both L.A., Orange County heavy, and San Diego County coming to live here in this bedroom community. What does that look like? Well, think about it. Uh, If you're coming from Orange County, your little cracker box house is pulling in a million dollars. And that's really great. But the quality of living in that tiny house is a lot different if you were to come out here into the valley. So a lot of people are doing it. They're selling that old house before they have to throw money into it. And they're coming out here. And ever since COVID, we've had work from home. Uh, I have a client that currently is working down in La Jolla. She came from New York. She's been in La Jolla for eight months now, renting an apartment. She's paying $3,600 to rent an apartment close to work. She's having to put her kids in Escondido. Significant drive difference just so she could afford the living. She can't afford to live in La Jolla. She has to live in Escondido. She's got the kids in private school. And now She's got to go ahead and figure out how to how to buy a home. She's making a great living. I mean, she's making a great living, but it's not enough as a single mom with two kids to try to put them into a house that she owns. So working from home is a great solution. Her current employer just got a um, promotion, Yahoo, and her current employer says you can work from home. So where do you want to live? So she's out here. It makes sense to come up to this area, put her kids in a very safe school, and buy a home. So she's coming in. She's buying a brand new home from Lennar. She was able to get into that home for something like five forty, five fifty, three bedroom, two bath, brand spanking new, a little yard for her dog. It's a win all the way around. So for her, commuting down to San Diego makes sense a couple times a week. And um, she checks in. She lives a good life. Her kids are in the public school she wants them to be. She has plenty of charter schools out here, too, that are great. And so it works for her. So for Orange County folks, it's the same thing. So my son moved out when he went to college to L.A., and he got settled in to um, beautiful living out there. His first starter home was 975. It was less than 1,000 square feet. 975. Now, he sold that later for a profit, and he turned it around. He was fortunate enough, one of the very fortunate ones, to find a row of houses they had tore down and Builder put up five houses in a row, and he was able to get in there. And he's made buku killing in five years. Obviously, the appreciation is there. He's been smart. He bought smart. He's good. But he's got a big mortgage, a big mortgage for a young person. And so that money could be spent better here and put money in the bank. And that's what a lot of people are doing. They're banking the profit they're making elsewhere, coming over here, finding a nice house and moving and living here, putting their kids into the public school, and it seems to work. So how about our schools? What are they like? So I'm part of the advisory committee for superintendents in Murrieta Valley. I happen to know people who serve on the school board. They are always working to make the living here, the the schools better and better. They fight tooth and nail to make sure your schools are better. Obviously, we're underfunded. You know, that's that's something that happens. You got a nice neighborhood, you're a little underfunded. You got a crummy neighborhood, the state will supplement that. So they are coming to the rescue in some of our surrounding areas where there's some needs, there's some great needs, and the state is rising, and those schools are going to get better. So it's up to us, the PTA, everybody else that that fundraises for the school to improve things. So we are constantly looking towards that. And as people move from Orange County, San Diego County, coming to Riverside County, this small inland valley, we're seeing a 
very significant increase in the number of bodies that are here. Our average age, if you look, is 36.4 years old. Those are folks having kids, right? So we probably got little ins entering into our schools, and our school boards are monitoring that growth along the way to see what kind of bodies we need, what kind of teachers, what kind of classrooms, how big the classrooms need to be, and what is the forecast. If, if we've got most kids or most uh, adults here are having two-year-olds and four-year-olds, how many years from now will it impact our middle schools in another area? And do they have the capacity for 600 new kids, right? And this is something that blows my mind that we are thinking about, right? It makes common sense, but that's what your school boards do. They're not only dealing with the curriculum, they're dealing with the facilities, the people, the teachers, the salaries, the growth, you know, having the right people interacting with the city for projects. They're working hand in foot with our friends at the city at every level. This goes for Temecula, Marietta, and all the surrounding areas. They interact with these folks and they want to know, okay, what development is going in? Are you putting in a housing track over there? Are you putting a housing track over there? How many homes? You know, the average per capita per home is 2.5 people. And then they multiply that into the future and they know what it is that we expect. The things that could change that are economic downturns. What could change that is health, wellness of people. Obviously, it could be that the prices soar so high that people don't move here anymore. It makes sense to stay in place. So those are all things that these school boards look at. Well, let's talk a little bit about the commute. So right now, our freeways, we're located off the 15 freeway. In fact, out my window, I can see it. It's moving right now, but that's not always the case. So we have traffic impacting us. Caltrans is responsible for the road systems that run north and south. Okay. They have already thought about, they track, I learned this, I did not know this. Apparently they track the GPS in our phones to figure out where Liz is driving every day, where you're driving every day. And they, they see us as little red lines looping around and they monitor how many cars are on a freeway or on a highway or getting off at a certain exit along every single day. They use that data to then project how much money they need for road systems. Did you know that our cities are responsible for all the on and off exits? that are involved in the city. So here in Temecula, gosh, there's probably like six exits. I know in Murrieta, there's another five exits. And so they have an on and off, obviously. So that on and off must be co-funded with Caltrans based on traffic patterns, right? So Caltrans will handle the highway, right? If they have it in their budget to widen the freeway, that's Cal Caltrans. If it affects an on and off stop. We've had Winchester and French Valley that needed to be done recently. And we have so much traffic that started to back up on the freeway. When that happens, Caltrans gets involved. The city partners with them said, this is a security hit, you know, risk. People are at safety risk. So they then budget. Here's the next three years. We expect this many cars. This will cost $50 million. We want you to be responsible for $25 million. And okay, we approve the budget. And then the planning starts from there. Each one of our cities, I go to all of these beautiful Coffee with the City, State of the City, they have this in mind every single year and they're working behind the scenes all the time. We all know that traffic is a tough one. If you're talking about the East West, that's local. So that's a city's concerns. So the number of cars that hit the road, uh, the condition of the roads, the potholes that hit the roads, um, the backup at the lights, the timing of the lights, that's all set up and run by the city. And uh, it's monitored every day. And then in addition to that, then you've got safety, you know, public safety concerning all of those things. Parks are all controlled by the city. It's pretty amazing. So our transportation, most of our folks are coming from San Diego right now. We've got a fare coming north. So you might see at the 91 interchange Corona, which is a city we haven't talked about, but let's say if we are at the 91 freeway, Corona, Riverside, that area, there's a small percentage of people coming down this way, coming down, small percentage. 
And then we've got a huge percentage of people going from San Diego County, North County, up to Temecula. And that's, that's where I did. I, that was my commute when I first came here. I actually drove 40 minutes, but I didn't really have a slowdown at that time. That's 2001. I didn't really have a slowdown. Right now, people are getting a slowdown. So picture this. Going down to San Diego in the morning is a tough ride. It's an hour and 15 minutes minimum. And uh, that doesn't matter where you are in San Diego. If you're far down San Diego, you know, way San Diego, you're going to have a two-hour drive. And that's just the way it is. And coming back home on a Friday, slow, really slow, especially when you hit Temecula. So I'm, I'm being really upfront and honest with you. Um, we're seeing traffic become a real issue. So I know the cities are working on it. I know that Caltran is working on it. It is probably not going to solve itself over the weekend, and it's worth considering. But a lot of people are working in place. And as you do that, or as we bring in large corporations here, we have Abbott here, we have a lot of the car dealerships here, we have innovative the City Innovation Center, that we're bringing medical down. We have four hospitals here. As we bring more and more big business, we're having more jobs here for those people that serve. And uh, that's going to keep people local. And the other th consideration is because we are a bedroom community, we really do not have set up any kind of public transportation. I'm sure buses exist, right? Nobody's taking them. We don't have a train system. We don't have a subway system. We got Uber. We got, you know, grandma needs to ride them, but just about everybody owns a car. I'm told that this area per capita, per household, has more cars than any other area because everybody has one. A teenager has them, mom has it, dad has it, you know, sister, brother. So there's more cars per capita in this area than any place else. Now, if you're in the car business, that's a really good thing. If you're a mechanic, that's a really good thing. If you're changing oil, that's a really good thing, right? But for everybody who has got to get on the road every day, it's a tough one. This wraps up part one of our discussion on the daily challenges and unique features of our local community. I hope you found our conversation both insightful and engaging. Hey, but there's still more to talk about in part two coming up. See you next week. Take care. Thank you for listening to Local Living Tri-City. Stay tuned for more insights and stories from Temecula, Murrieta, Menifee and surrounding areas. Be sure to subscribe, leave a review, and share this episode with a friend that is passionate about the Tri-City area as you are. Goodbye for now, and we'll see you next episode.